Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to cache data coming from an API. And then I'm going to show you how to access more advanced use cases in Workbox by using Inject Manifest. So let's get started. So I've got the same project as before and the glob pattern specifies the files that I want to pre-cache. What I want to add now is the runtime caching. So I add a new runtime caching options which takes an array of objects. And in every object you have to specify the URL pattern which is going to be a regular expression. So there will be a regular expression here and the handler. So we want to cache all network requests that are going to this API. So I'm going to copy the URL of our API and then paste it over here. And then I have to transform it into a regular expression. So I'll escape this, these slashes and the dots. And now I have a regular expression that matches this API. And then for the handler that I'm going to use, there are three commonly used handlers. I'm going to use network first. Network first means the request is going to go to the network first. If it succeeds, we're going to get back the response. But if for some reason we cannot get a response from the network, for example, if you're offline, then we're going to get the response from the cache instead. And this is what lets us make our application work offline. Because in case there's no internet connection, we fall back to the cache. So now I simply have to run npm run build. And this is going to run the workbox generate sw and pass in the workbox configuration file. And now I can see the newly generated service worker file, which is over here. And if I scroll down all the way at the end, we have a workbox.routing.register route with this regular expression and the network first strategy. So now let's go back to the browser and give this a shot. So as soon as I reload the page, it's gonna pull the new version of the service worker, which will not be activated just yet. If we go to application, and service worker, you're going to see that this is the new service worker that is waiting to activate. I will show you in the next video how to do this automatically, but for now we're just going to click skip waiting. Normally it automatically skips waiting when you close the tab and then open this again, but in the next video I'm going to show you how to automatically do that. So now let's go back to the network tab, and if I reload the page, you're going to see that the request for users is being satisfied by the service worker. So this request goes through the service worker, which goes through the internet, gets the users, and then returns them to the page. And at the same time, it saves a copy in the cache. And you can visualize this if you go to application, cache storage, open it, and then we're gonna have a workbox runtime for users, which has the request URL, the method, the status code, and also the preview. So this is a version in the cache that we can use whenever we need it. So now if I go back to the network tab and simulate offline and I reload the page, you're going to see that even though we went offline, the app shell is being served from the service worker and also for the data that's coming from our API. So this request does not fail because it goes through the service worker, which tries to go to the internet, but this network request fails. So this is why it reverts back to the cache. And if, if you click here, you can see we're still getting a response because the service worker has a fallback strategy to the cache. Technically, that's all you need to do to cache network requests that's coming from your API. But I'm going to go a step further and show you how to stay in control of your service worker. Because sometimes you want to use advanced use cases of service workers. For example, you want to add support for push notifications. And you cannot write all of your configuration in Workbox config. This is why you also have the option to write your own service worker file and inject in it information about the files that you're going to pre-cache. And this is exactly what we're going to do now. So I'm going to start by creating a new file and calling it src-sw.js. And this file is going to contain my original service worker code, which will then have additional information added by Workbox. So let's go into Workbox config and we need to remove this runtime caching because we're going to write it inside src-sw. And I still need to add an SWSRC. So we're telling Workbox where is the original source of your service worker. And that's going to be in this file. And one more thing, I want to go to the package.json. And instead of using generate SW, I'm going to use inject manifest. And again, you could use generate SW, it's perfectly fine. Inject manifest just gives you more control over your service worker. But it doesn't really affect the way caching works. It just gives you more flexibility into writing your own service worker code. So now let's go into src sw.js and I can add a console.log hello from service worker and let's add in a gear icon here. 
And in the beginning of the script, I have to import workbox from the CDN. At the time of recording, the latest version is 3.4.1. You might need to adjust this if you watch this video in the future. So we're importing workbox. We have our own custom service worker code. Think about this where you could have more advanced stuff like push notifications or any advanced use case. And then finally, we need to tell workbox where to inject the pre-cache information. So this is why we have to call workbox.precaching.precache and route and pass in an empty array. This line is a placeholder for workbox to replace by actual pre-cache information of your files. So let me show you an example. Let's just go back now to the command line and run npm run build. And if we go see what our sw.js looks like, we're gonna have the import scripts, loading workbox, our own custom code. And this is how workbox replaced the square brackets with our pre-cache information. So now whenever you wanna make some changes to your service worker, you have to make sure to do them in src-sw. This is your source. So for example, I could add some dynamic routes, just like we did with the runtime caching. So we call workbox.routing.registerRoute. And then I have to pass in a regular expression for the API, which is over here. Pass in this, let's make it into a regular expression. And then I could use workbox.strategies.network first. So now let's generate a new version of the service worker, npm run build, and let's go back into the browser so actually what we've done so far is exactly the same as the beginning of the video, but the only difference is that we were able to run a console log from our service worker. And to show you this, I'm just gonna start from scratch. So I'm gonna hold and empty cache and reload. And the first time the service worker is going to run, we're gonna have a hello from service worker. So in this video, you learned how to use inject manifest and also how to cache data coming from an API. And in the next video, we're gonna transform this project to use Webpack because that's what you'll most likely be using in a real project. And we're gonna use Webpack Workbox plugin and configure it together. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell to stay up to date with new videos and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.